Now, Lindsey Williams, one of his oil company exec sources died about a year ago, Ken Fromm, a little more than a year ago. He's got the other source, I know the source's name, uh, and they, Lindsey said here about six months ago, he said, now it's going to start going up. And then now we have the headlines of $200 a barrel oil. Uh, the national average, AAA says, is 390 Some areas over 450 It's all starting. Dollar devaluation. Now they're finally talking about QE3. A little bit later than some people thought. Lindsay said, no, it's not going to be till the end of 2012. And, of course, much of what Lindsay said over time has turned out to be frighteningly accurate. So no need to thank us or anything, Lindsay. Just out of the gates, give us those bullet points. We didn't even get to them all Sunday. We've got limited time. You're gracious to join us. Give us the data dump up front, the latest info that Mr. X has given you. There is not going to be a financial collapse in April, May, or June. Uh, you did hear correctly. There is going to be one. There positively will be a financial collapse. It is already planned. There were many people who made fortunes during 1929 through 33 during the Great Depression because they knew what was going to happen. If you will listen to my elitist friend, you can spare yourself major heartache. Now, you have time. This is a window of opportunity. Take advantage of it right now. When will the financial collapse take place? I am going to tell you today right here on the Alex Jones Show also my elitist friend has told me why Mr. Obama may not be reelected. You heard me correctly. I said he may not. I didn't say he wasn't going to be. I said he may not, and it's all because of the Keystone Pipeline, and there's so much more involved in that than you ever could have imagined. You are going to be amazed. Back in 1966, I bought gasoline for 35 cents a gallon. At the same time, that same year, I could go into a bank, and place a one dollar bill on the counter and get a silver dollar, one ounce of silver. 1979, for the first time, gasoline in September of that year went to one dollar a gallon, and we thought the world was coming apart. In 2004, in May of that year, it went to two dollars a gallon. 2005 went to three. 2008, it went to four. In the past two weeks, you've seen it go up 19 cents. It is going to 7 and $8. Mark my words, you may as well prepare and get ready for it. There are things taking place amongst the elite right now that are so startling. If you will take time to do something about it, you can prepare and spare yourself major heartache. Now, Alex, I've got to say congratulations on what you did with Sheriff Joe Arpaio. And I thank you for that you allowed me to give it to one of your producers here a while back that you should contact him immediately. Well, sure. He didn't get into everything. He didn't get into all of it, but he, he covered a lot. It's coming up. We have even more of the chief investigator that we're going to get on the nightly news as soon as we can. We've got like hours of stuff. Uh, but let me tell you, uh, I, I already found what their investigation found, and I just went and looked at it. And I said, okay, here it is. Let's go look at it. And I know fake typewriter fonts on computers Every typewriter strike is original, like a fingerprint or a snowflake, because of how hard you hit the key and what's going on in the ribbon. The, it's all fake typewriter. The C's are the same. The B's are the same. The, the, uh, the, you know, the T's are the, It's all the same. It's a fake computer typewriter font. It's 100% just on that. Everything else is fake. The selective service is fake. Uh, the, the Social Security number is somebody else's. Uh, the State Department said his dad wasn't his dad and kicked him out of the U.S. No kidding, looks nothing like him. It, it, his real name is Barry Sotero. They admit that. Uh, three years ago, we were kooks to talk about it. On and on and on, it's all fake. And uh, Arpaio is, uh, well, we're going to get to the interview. But uh, let's start getting into, I mean, did he tell you specifically when the collapse, uh, the planned collapse is going to take place? Uh, all right, we'll go to the collapse first. Now, you positively are going to see one about a year ago. I was put in touch with a gentleman. Please write his name down. Folks, I beg of you, everyone out there in the listening audience today, please get a pencil and piece of paper right now and write down some of the facts that my elitist friend have told me. Keep in mind, these people are now in their 70s and 80s. They are concerned about their children. One of them has talked with me on a regular basis for the past few days. He's concerned about his wife, 
And when you get to the place you're facing the graveyard, sometimes you say things you won't say otherwise. I lived with these people for three years, have kept in touch with them over the years, and as a result, I can honestly say there positively is a group of people on the face of the earth who control the world. What about the financial collapse? Yes, it is going to take place. I was put in touch about a year ago with a gentleman by the name of Tom Fowler. Please go and look him up. You can talk with him personally if you wish. He just completed a DDD series with me in which he tells his entire story on Wall Street and the corruption that he saw there. And I said, Tom, would you be willing to tell your story? And he said, yes. Well, I did mine also. And he said and was told, and so also I was told, it, it fits perfectly together, when will the collapse take place? It is not going to take place during April, May, and June for a reason. The elite are intentionally creating massive debt in every nation, every city, every county, every state, all over the world. They have not created all of the debt that they want to create yet. They're creating it for the purpose of when they finally do decide to let the collapse take place, they will have no chance. Let's say, for instance, Greece. Whenever... Greece, they bought their bonds. Who in the world, in their right mind, would buy any Greek paper? They know good and well it's bankrupt. There's no way that they're going to make their money back. But that's what it's all about. The elite have bought the Greek bonds and the Greek paper. But when Greece fell, uh, the, the whole financial system did not collapse. And many people were saying it was going to, and I said, no, it's not going to. Well, whenever they do allow it to, allow it to collapse, they can merely step in and say, Greece, you have no choice. We own your paper. We own you. We have bought your bonds. Now, you have no choice but to accept our new currency. After all, your currency has already collapsed. But folks, that's not only Greece. Do you realize that's going to happen in America? When we get up to 15, 18, 20 trillion dollars worth of debt and the American dollar has collapsed. Oh, by the way, please put it down if you haven't before. The dollar will be dead by the end of of 2012. I did not say it was going to be non-existent. It will still be there. Listen to the words carefully of the elite. The dollar will be dead by the end of 2012, and whenever they do allow the collapse to take place, they can step in and say, America, forget about your constitution. Your children are crying. You're going hungry. Your dollar is so worthless that you take a wheelbarrow load of dollars to the grocery store to buy a loaf of bread. You're saying, you're saying that by December, it's going to be no longer the world reserve currency how long will it take then if, if your source is right uh, for people to really get desperate get desperate shortly and let me prove to you why please now i'm glad you have those pencils and paper by now china and japan two months ago signed the largest trade agreement that's ever been signed on the face of the earth in in history and they said we'll sell and trade amongst ourselves america is the number one economy in the world china is number two japan is number three and they said we will not use the american dollar the petrodollar the reserve currency of the world for this trade agreement we will use other currencies the dollar at that point, for all practical purposes, the nail was driven into the coffin of the dollar two months ago, and the average person didn't know it. Now watch the other two th times, and you will see the progression. And toward the end of 2012, the elite have it all planned. Iran and India, as you know, the United States of America placed sanctions on Iran. Then the European Union placed sanctions on Iran and said you cannot buy any Iranian oil as of June the 1st. Then the United Nations came along. Do you realize that when we place sanctions on Iran, the United States of America, that we basically said you cannot use the petrodollar for the sale of your oil anymore? Yet Iran is the third largest supplier of oil in the world. Number one is Russia. Number two is uh, Saudi Arabia. Number three is Iran. Do you realize what this does? To Iran, oh, India stepped up and said, Iran, no problem. You can't use the petrodollar anymore. But we will buy uh, that million barrels of oil that you're selling to the European Union every, uh, every day. We will be more than happy to buy it. Our economy is growing. We need it. And, oh, please, you've got to catch this. And we will pay you in gold oh my goodness right, we'll get to that when we come back we got a break lindsey williams is our guest and he has another dvd out with this economist that he's talking about and we'll also give you the number and website for that 
uh, and give you the name of it. Um, also, I promise to get Lindsay on today and take some calls. Questions for Lindsay Williams? Unscreened, bring them in. 800 259 9231. 800 259 I want to go to some calls, and in the next segment, I'm, people need to have their pens and paper ready, like you said, because I'm going to give them uh, the name of the new documentary you put together, and it has all this laid out in it, and more. Uh, but just just briefly, because I want to go right to calls, What what is your elitist friend telling you about precious metals and the type of currencies they're going to be used in the future? He said, you, you must get into a certain type of currency immediately. Uh, Alex, I also need to go back to the American dollar for a moment, and also, please, folks, the Keystone Pipeline is so much more important than the average person knows. I've got so much to say today. I'll try to get it all in. You must immediately get into the proper type of currency. I hope you're hearing this. Now, there is going to be a financial collapse. I'll tell you when it's going to be, and I'll tell you exactly how you can know when it's going to be. But there were people... Many people made great fortunes in 1929. Not everybody stood in a soup line in 1933. And the people who prepared in advance knew that the great financial collapse of 1929, the Depression, was going to take place. They had no problems whatsoever surviving and made great fortunes in that period of time. You can also. And you'll remember that before Mr. Fromm died, we had that conversation. I related it. It's in the archives of your programs, Alex, that they said to me, the currency of the elite is gold and silver. Now, let me clarify. I do not sell gold and silver. Alex can tell you where to get it. You couldn't buy an ounce from me if you tried. I'm only telling you what they've told me in order to try to save you much heartache. He said to me, the currency of the elite is gold and silver. If you had listened to my elitist friend three years ago when I first told that on the Alex Jones show, your money right now would be worth three times what it was at the time that my elitist friend said it to me. Instead, many of you invested in every other thing imaginable, and now you've lost it, whether it be the stock market, the 401 ks the IRA, the dinars, I don't care what it is. You listen to the elite this time, please. You need to invest in, you ready? Please jot this down. You have those pencils and paper ready. Please invest in currency, gold and silver, minted by the United States Mint. Please hear this. You cannot go and invest in foreign coins. You need to invest in gold and silver minted by the United States Mint. Why? The state of Utah just passed a law the other day, and it's actually on the books now. Three states, I understand, have done this, saying that gold and silver emitted by the United States Mint, legal tender, must be accepted at the grocery store, the hardware store, and the drug store. Yeah, a bunch so of states, states are doing that, and, and I know they say stuff pre-1933 that's U.S. is non-confiscatable, but, I mean, if they pass a law like that again, I'm not turning in a little bit of gold and silver I've got. I mean, they're a bunch of crooks. I know my great-granddaddy, actually my great-grandfather, my, my, my grandfather's father owned a car dealership in Dallas, was the first Chevy dealership up there. He didn't turn his gold in. He laughed at all the people that did. But, uh, but, but I mean, your elitist friend is actually implying they're going to confiscate gold? He did not say that. He said just in case. Now, now, keep in mind, the elite don't always get what they want. In fact, Mr. Obama just double-crossed the elite the other day when he canceled out. Yeah, briefly, tell folks pipeline. about the, the uh, Keystone. Well, first of all, get into pre-1933 gold and get into silver of any date. According to federal law, they cannot confiscate one ounce of gold, which you call silver dollars, minted by the United States Mint of any date, 2012, 2011, all the way back on silver. But gold, anything prior to pre-1933 cannot be confiscated. Get into it. You need to get into the currency immediately that the elite have. They bought it by the ton. Secondly, Keystone Pipeline. This was so significant, you can't imagine. Now, think, think. Keep it, the, come on, get your thinking cap on a moment. Mr. Obama said, I am going to announce on a certain date as to what the United States of America will do in relation to the Keystone Pipeline. He did not announce it that day. This is more significant than you can imagine. Please, watch it. And then two weeks later, he announced what he was going to do about the Keystone Pipeline, and he said it's not to the advantage of Americans to do it. Oh, what a flowery speech he gave. Why did he say this? I went to my elitist friend. 
I was amazed. I, I mean, he was livid. You talking about mad? I've never heard him so mad in my life. Now, this man's in his 70s. He, he's the one that gives me information so much after Mr. Prom died. And he said, I will give you his exact words. I said, why did he cancel out on the Keystone Pipeline? I will give you his exact words. He said, and I hope you'll write them down. He is a Muslim. Oh, my goodness. That said more than you can imagine. I said, what do you mean he's a Muslim? Mr. Obama double-crossed the elite. They are livid at him right now. They may not allow him to get reelected. He canceled out on the Keystone Pipeline in favor of his Muslim Brotherhood brethren. You saw him. You saw the pictures. He went to Saudi Arabia. So that's what the former oil Houston company uh, head is telling you. All right, we're coming right back and go to calls. Uh, going back just briefly here. Lindsay has put together with this latest information a new DVD presentation uh, film slash talk uh, with the gentleman he was talking about. Very powerful info. Secrets of the Elite. Uh, prophecyclub.com or 888-799-6111. 888-799-6111 if you want to see it all congruently put together without me interrupting in the ads uh, and the rest of it. Uh, let's go ahead uh, here, Lindsay, and go to some phone calls and then we'll get your brief comment on... Uh, the Arpaio thing before we go to that, because I know you got the inside baseball, as usual. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and talk to Doug in California. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, let's go to Doug first, the listing on channel 166 XM, and then Tommy. Go ahead. Hey, hi, Alex. Nice talking to you again here from Santa Cruz. I called you July 5th about the weaponization of water. Uh, I'm really glad you have an old school person like uh, your guest on there, because he remembers in 1981 when... Bank of America was paying 22% interest. And uh, uh, anyway, what I'd like his reaction to is uh, what's been going on with the NDAA. I'm actually running for a political office here, and I've incorporated uh, your material that I've learned on your program to ask that our local law enforcement here proactively look at this and say they're not going to enforce this unconstitutional law and nullity. Well, well there are a bunch of states moving to block it. Virginia's passed a law saying police don't put bags over citizens' heads and help the feds take them away, and if you see the feds doing it, arrest them. So there's like eight states now passing laws or that have passed them. Great questions. Thank you for the call. Lindsey Williams. NDAA, martial law provisions, executive orders, power grabs. Uh, did your uh, former oil company uh, head exec uh, give you any intel on that? Mr. Fromm did before he ever passed away. In fact, I'll never forget the day that the health care bill was supposed to have been put before Congress. And prior to that, he knew everything that was in it. And he said to me one day when we were talking about it, I said, I understand there's going to be a health care provision before Congress. He said, Chaplain, that is not a health care bill. I said, Ken, what are you talking about? He said, that is not a health care bill. He said, that is total control. He said, that, the Patriot Act, along with the health care bill, brings about total control to the American people. It was hatched up by then. No congressman ever read it. The president himself did not read it before he signed it. And it was put before Congress by the elite. And the story of the inside workings of how they got votes on that, you are going to be dumbfounded when you hear the person who appeared with me on this DVD and Secrets of the Elite tell the story. Wow. Yeah, it is a takeover of the infrastructure. Thank you so much, uh, caller there from uh, Santa Cruz. Uh, we got two affiliates of Santa Cruz. You can listen to us like that as well. Uh, let's talk to uh, Tommy in Costa Rica. You're on the air. Thank you for holding. Hello, Alex. Lindsay, how you doing? Good, Hi, Tommy. Good. Listen, uh, Lindsay, put your thinking cap on about 1974. Uh, you walked into a bar with Mr. Fromm and Mr. L. in Anchorage, Alaska, uh, the Anchorage International Inn, where I was a bartender part-time while in the service. Uh, I said hello to you, and Mr. Fromm, I think, introduced you as the teetotaler. But uh, beyond that, uh, I had met Ken or talked to Ken uh, a couple times after uh, after that incident. And uh, Ken drew me aside one time and told me, he knew I was in the service, and he said, never mind the standing armies, beware of the bankers. And this stuck in my mind for the longest time. I had people from... Oh, that's uh, a good quote. I mean, uh, we've got the Rothschild quote about, I don't care who runs the government as long as I control the money. Uh, you know, don't worry about standing armies, it's the bankers. Wow, go ahead. Exactly. I never forgot that. And Alex, I was going to call you earlier on this because, Lindsay, I thought I'd call you today. 
Uh, it's uh, also some people came in. I thought they were working on the pipeline. This relates to Fletcher uh, about what are you guys doing? I said, what are you guys doing up here? Uh, working on the pipeline? No, we're working. We're in the Galkina. We're working on a way to control the weather. And this was back in 1974. Well, that's where they do it up there in Alaska. Do you remember exactly. walking into that bar with uh, Mr. L and uh, Mr. Fromm uh, there, Lindsay? I am so glad that you called from Costa Rica. I want to thank you. You know, for so many years, people said, Lindsey Williams is not in the world but just a pony. He really didn't know all these people. And now, of course, when Mr. Fromm passed away, uh, now even Alex and others know. I'm glad that you did not mention the name of the second gentleman. He's still alive. He's in his 70s. You and I know who he is. This gentleman is exactly right. I remember walking into the bar. You know, ministers can walk into bars. They just don't have to drink the alcohol. <laughs> I walked in that day, and we had a great time, and I remember it well. Thank you, thank you, thank you for adding credibility to the fact that I've been telling the truth all these years. Absolutely, and I met you at the Captain Cook Athletic Club. Briefly, shook your hand. I was one of the muscle idiots down there in the basement. <laughs> but uh, that's another long story. Anyway, uh, my question, Alex and Lindsay. Uh, I listened to your show on Sunday, and we're talking about Obama being elected and, and how he got his money, and we're talking about the Muslim Brotherhood. Now, how, how did the elite let that get by them? Do you follow what I'm telling you? They have such control. Well, but you heard Fletcher. There's all this constant backstabbing going on. Yeah, that's true. I know that, Alex. But I'm just, I'm just saying, how did it get rid? How did the elite? I mean, they've elected every president since Canada. Yeah, they were going to double cross the Arabs, and that's what they were going to do was break that deal. And it sounds like Obama is not doing that. Uh, I appreciate your call. It's a great question, uh, Lindsay. That's a good question. Okay, first of all, there was Egypt, and after Mubarak was deposed in Egypt, I went to my latest friend, whom this gentleman is referring to right here on the air, and I said, what in the world is going on? He told me everything that the elite were going to do for the next few years, how that they would go right into Libya. Gaddafi set them back. Oh, please, listen to the dates here. Gaddafi set the elite back two to three months because he wouldn't give in as quick as they thought he was going to. Then they came around to Syria right now, and Assad, Assad has set them back another three to four months. You see, the elite are only human. They think they're God, but they're only human beings, and they're not getting what they want. As a result, they were set back some here, and they told me the entire story, which, Alex, you'll remember. One year ago, approximately, I produced the series the Middle East, the rest of the story, and told every bit of it because... It's yeah, but you said before that, that they were going to bring down... What they Sure, sure. You said before that they were going to bring down the Middle East, though. Lindsay, we got to jump to another caller. Thank you, a caller from Costa Rica. Um, Marty in Wisconsin, quick question for our guest. Go ahead. Thank you very much for taking my call. I live in a small city in Wisconsin, and I'm looking to purchase a rural property. Would I, would I be better, and this is a question for both of you guys, would I be better off waiting until you know, after December, or would I be better off doing this now? Well, I don't want to give you financial advice because everybody's case is different, and then even if it's good advice, something changes, then it's bad advice. I, I just think, you, you know, you should pray about it and, do, and, and uh, do your own research and make your own decision. Lindsay? Yes, on my new DVD series, Secrets of the Elite, I've said to Tom Fowler, I said, Tom, are you willing for people to actually call you personally? You will find his phone number. He's one of the most knowledgeable Wall Street insiders you'll ever find. If you want to talk to a man who knows it and has the license to be able to advise you, I'd suggest that you give him a call. Yeah, and again, make your own decision and keep your own counsel uh, as well. Uh, but... It, Again, it's, it's a complex issue. Anything else, uh, Marty? No, nope, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, let's jam in. Tim in Michigan, you're on the air with Lindsey Williams. Go ahead. Hey, Alex, how have you been? Been doing okay, brother. It's your, it's your, old, your old friend Bubba from the uh, uh, the Google Bomb. Uh, That's right. You're the listener who had the idea for the Google Bomb that worked like a charm yeah. for about a year, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I'm glad I was able to uh, 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 be uh, be an influence. And I also, I also uh, uh, was able to get the uh, 
the fluoride on my first try with a six minutes. You took action. I, you had a big victory. You sent us the local news article. Uh, you have a question for Lindsay, my friend. Yes, I do. Um, actually, I have two things. Um, um, I, I've been, I've been, I've been uh, making small uh, investments in, in uh, 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 silver, uh, uh, you know, silver rounds, and uh, when I can't afford it or when I can find them, I have been uh, picking up on. Um, on some British sovereigns, uh, although I'm on um, uh, uh, social, social Security, it, 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 it does... Okay, it specifically, we're almost stuff. out of time. What's your question, specifically? Uh, okay, specifically, I have, for Lindy, I have, I have, I have uh, uh, a question about uh, a theory that I have about um, when... Kennedy tried to reinvoke the. Uh, uh, he tried to get rid of the Federal Reserve. Let, let, let me ask that question. Thank you, sir. We just got to go in the interest of time. Uh, his his point about Kennedy being killed for trying to reissue uh, U.S. money. Yes, don't buy anything but American gold and silver when you buy. Uh, to get into the Kennedy story, take an entire program, Alex. All right, Lindsay, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we've only got about a minute till we've got to go to this tape if we're going to have time. What's your comment on Sheriff Arpaio? I know you live out there in Phoenix. Uh, Sheriff Arpaio, what he has told you, I'm so glad you I want to say congratulations. Uh, he knows a whole lot more than just the birth certificate issue. Uh, I can't go any further on the air. I'd like to talk with you off the air about it. Folks, when this financial collapse is going to take place, watch derivatives. You'll find it all in our new series, Secrets of the Elite. And thank you, Alex, for allowing me the privilege. All right. Thank you so much, today. Lindsay. God bless. Good to hear from you. Ask yourself, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? What are you doing to unlock minds?